Yes, what we see happening with IMS is IMS is a future safe technology, which means that all operators have, or all service providers have IMS somewhere on their roadmap. It depends a bit on the, on the different market drivers, what is their implementation roadmap, and whether they are going to start with evolution of voice services first or going for innovative new services first. So this depends a little bit on customer per customer and market per market. I think there are a number of, of differences. I wouldn't put the main difference between emerging markets and mature markets, but much more between let's say operators who already have their legacy voice and competitive operators who want to get revenue from, from their broadband investments. So IMS is being used in two scenarios as a kind of network evolution, but at the same time as, as a new service introduction means and they are not necessarily contradicting. Some operators may, may play the two tracks at the same time. They will use IMS for voice over IP, voice over broadband and at the same time enrich these services with multimedia capabilities and web-based management and, uh, and instant messaging and presence. Now, uh, existing operators or operators with an existing voice base may do exactly the same to build out a, a new offer for a smooth evolution from their uh, legacy offer to their new offer. So again, it's not a real contradiction. Uh, it's, it's quite logical that he's going to offer voice and multimedia services very likely in a kind of bundle with, with high-speed internet, a dual play bundle, probably at maybe some, some video services, some video programming, but he's certainly going to to concentrate on offering a, bund a rich bundle of voice over IP, high-speed internet, and then enrich with some multimedia features. First of all, what we notice is that standardized is not always a synonym for interoperable, interoperable which means that if you look to box-to-box -box interoperability, uh, CSCF towards uh, terminal functions. Th this is mainly what has been been done in these plug fests. What does Alcatelucent we are looking very much at is the end-to-end -end interoperability. You have interrupt test, you have functional, and you have load, and you only can put a network under load and see that it's scalable to 10,000s or 100,000s of subscribers if you look at the big picture and not just at looking whether one box is interoperable with another one. An operator can indeed combine multi-vendor infrastructures. Only depends, you don't have... If you look to IMS, IMS is a functional architecture with more than 20 different functional components. Of course, as an operator, if you go to a scenario for 20 different boxes, you will get complexity and integration cost. But one of the scenarios we see very often happening is a core from one vendor, different application servers from other vendors, and then the whole terminal space coming from other vendors. So most of the integration and interoperability we are doing is indeed between the IMS core and the, and the CPE and between the IMS core and the applications. Indeed, uh, probably you know the RCS, Rich Communications Initiative. Alcatel is a member and a, and a full sponsor of, of this initiative. For us, we really look at the end-to-end -end solutions. So, I would even disagree if you say we are a manufacturer we are actually active indeed in the network equipment part, but as well in the applications part as in the end-to-end -end integration. Only in the, in the terminal part, but there we, we play an active role working with third parties and working with partners to make sure that the end-to-end -end picture is, is fitting. My, my presentation was actually called uh, laying the foundation for the second wave of transformation. And the presentation was saying that we have seen a first wave of transformation which was driven by cost reduction and network evolution and that now we are gradually moving into a second wave which is much more driven by new applications and new revenue generation and that where for the first wave 
uh, engine based archi soft switch based architectures were regarded as a solution that for the second wave IMS will be playing a, a major role for enabling these new applications to be developed and to be deployed. Uh, I think there are plenty of possible applications. Now there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all applications. My personal opinion is that the killer application is a kind of a killer cocktail, which is a mix of broadband and multimedia and presence, and that you cannot deploy or develop any application if you don't know the market and what the end users are looking for. So IMS is providing the tools and the platform for creating and deploying these new applications, but operators will have to build up their ecosystem of application developers and content partners to develop the applications that are, that are the fit for their specific market. I, I think in terms of scalability, Yes, IMS has been deployed in networks with 100,000 of users. So physical scalability, deployment scalability, economical scalability, many operators are still dealing with different networks and overlay networks. And it's actually once they will get to the converged network, which will very likely be based on an IMS core, that they will reach the economies of scale. But I know, I don't think any operator who has fully outfaced the legacy network and uh, fully made the migration to IMS so the full economy of scale is not existing yet.